Hey, good morning, everybody. Mike Shea, Lakeland, Florida. Um, if this looks like a weird backdrop, it is. I'm sitting in a hospital room and answering some emails. Don't worry, not me, but it is a family member and um, some minor surgery we're taking care of. Anyway, it's been answering some emails this morning and looking at some data. Um, and if you get a chance, go to my LinkedIn page. There was an article I just wrote about uh, cell refinancing. So, um, effectively, we are seeing 11 and 12 percent interest rates in the SBA world, which is going to have a chilling effect on SBA financing. So, if you're a seller, and you may not want to hear this, but this is the, the God's honest truth, and I've always tried to tell you the truth. Um, you're going to have to do seller financing probably for the next 24 months. So if you're a baby boomer and you were planning on selling and you miss that seller tsunami, the reality is that time goes by, you are getting older um, and the next two years are going to be choppy. Um, even if we start to see rates go down, remember we have an election next year and presidential elections also have a chilling effect on the finance markets because banks operate in a world of predictability. And when things are uncertain, um, they pull back. If you think I'm lying, I encourage you to call SBA banks and ask them this question. Are you getting and building reserves uh, when it comes to your lending policies in the event of uncertain times and bank, you know, business failures and bad loans going bad on your books? And the answer to that is yes. I've talked to three in each bank in, in concert with their rate hikes associated with the federal interest rate hikes are taking reserves and being far more picky with regard to deals um, because there is going to be failures there are going to be businesses that crash and fail and banks are going to be less willing to lend because they are businesses as well they're not doing this for jesus they are lending to make money and that's the purpose of the interest and when the money they get from the fed is more expensive they pass that on to you the consumer is the basic tenant of finance so what do you have to do? You have to do seller financing. Um, the article I just laid out has a ton of information about why it's doable. We do it all the time. We did it for years. It was the primary mechanism by which financing was done in small business, and it is going to be the means by which it is done again. It can be done safely. It can be done creatively. Um, I did one last year where there was sufficient collateral that the seller who was over 65 was really concerned with taxes. He held liens on the land. He held liens on all the equipment on a $2.7 million deal. And guess what? He's been paid his $30,000 a month every month since the transactions happened. In fact, the sellers actually pre-wrote the checks, though the buyers pre-wrote the checks for them, told them to deposit it whenever because that business is thriving. Partly because of the creative financing terms that were afforded by the seller. The rates were lower and they were heavily collateralized and the payment structure was done in a manner that benefited the seller. Sellers, there are good things about seller financing and if you do not do it, you are decreasing the likelihood that your business will sell. People are gonna tell you what you wanna hear, um, but the reality is that when it comes down to it, the banks are not going to be able to lend like they have for the last 10 years. This is the medicine we have to take for, um, frankly, a frivolous lending policy that's gone on for the last 15 years. Um, so I encourage you to go to my LinkedIn page, uh, check out Twitter. Uh, it's going to be posted on my blog as well on yourfloridabusinessbroker.com. And uh, if you have any questions, as always, 321-287-0349 or email me at mike at tworld.com.